a story so far. Rumors in Dropstone suggest that the Monetary Express has another secret destination. The trio knows that in order to get there, something must be done on the train. Uh, what, however, remains a mystery. With nothing else to go on, the three start searching for any clues as to how to proceed. And with that, I say hello everyone and welcome back to Professor Layton and the Pandora's Box. As we are now in Chapter 3, A Diverging Path, where we may or may not find a way... Oh, I'm guessing we will find a way to Diverging Paths, Path, but... How we'll find out. I just can't stop thinking about how this fan this phantom town we've heard about. Could the rumors be true? Well, the next stop on this line is the perfectly normal town of Luxembel. Well then, how do we get to the phantom town? Hmm, that's an excellent question. But I do not have the answer, Luke. But if the Molontary Express does indeed head for parts unknown, the crew will know something about it. The professor Luke and Flora to dis decide to make some inquiries about uh, with the crew on the train. Yeah, Flora. Uh huh. I see what it is. Um. Nothing here. Hmm, apparently no. Okay, let's uh, get out of then. Can I go see what's here? Looks like there's no way in. Hmm. Nothing here, nothing there, nothing anywhere, as usual. What about the, the dining hall? Well, dining hall is also not here yet. It's also completely the same, I imagine. Because we're not getting any of the the spots that before had, like, a hint points. And now we get nothing. Ah. Huh. Also, you may notice um, the mouse is... Oh, the... the um, what are they called again? Not a stick. Um, the stylus. There you go. The stylus is a little bit smaller. I found it a bit too big at the end uh, last time. So let's see. What do you have? I beg your pardon, sir. But we're not open for business at the moment. Do visit us later. You're really closed? Yes, you see, on the way to Luxembourg, there's a long, only tunnel we have to pass through. When in the tunnel, none of the scenic views are on our restaurant affords. Patrons will be visible. It is m uh, Mr. Beluga's wish that we all patron, that all patrons be able to enjoy the scenery while they dine. And a temporary suspension of service. Wow, talk about a classy operation. Mr. Beluga has already thought of everything, hasn't he? It's not even to let everyone rest, you know? It's <laughs> just, yeah, the scenery won't be the same. Like, oh, okay. Sure then. Do you also not have anything? Oh, what's my little guy doing? I knew it'd be tough without him around, but I didn't realize how lonely I'd get. Is he happy at least? Uh, don't you worry. He's doing great. He'll be fit as a fiddle before you know it. That's really good to hear. But don't let me down, okay? I'm actually about to close up the kitchen and rest until we get to Luxembourg. Most of the train shuts down for it, uh, this leg of the trip, so you might as well go and rest in your room. Mm, they don't want to talk about anything, I see. But there is one thing that we can do, and that is... With Granny? And that's Babette's room. No one here either, that's so weird. Like, not gonna lie, it's so weird how empty everything is. It's like, where does... Where is everyone? <laughs> There you go, there's Granny. Granny, I'm gonna need this because uh, we missed the, the four puzzles last time. Which is impressive because the episode was still like almost three hours long. But okay, let's go. Johnny and Thomas are each carrying some apples. If Johnny gave Thomas one apple, the two men would have would each have the same amount uh, number of apples. Conservatively, if uh, Thomas gave Johnny two apples, Jenny would have three times the amount of apples that Thomas has. So many apples are each of the men holding? Oh, that's a math question. Okay, we have... So we have J and we have T, right? Um... 
If Johnny gave Thomas one apple. So if Johnny gave Thomas one apple. So if you have an apple more. Then the two of them would have the same amount of uh, apples. Conspiracy, if Thomas gave Johnny two apples. Then uh, Johnny would have three times the amount of apples that Thomas has. Hmm. Let me think about it first. It would be kind of like this, right? So we have Thomas gains an apple. If or oh, if Thomas gains an apple, he would have as many, as much as Johnny would have with one apple less. And if Thomas gave two apples away, so like Johnny would have two extra apples. Johnny would have three times the amount of what Thomas would have. So if we take that, then we will. Uh, mm, yeah, let's replace uh, T over here, right? So we're going to add or we're going to remove an additional apple over here. So we have T equals J minus two. So here we would have then three. Oh, well, we would then put this one into here. So here we would have like J minus four equals uh, J plus two. Right. So we'll take this and we'll um try to continue with that one so we have three times j minus four equals j minus no plus two right yeah plus two um we'll have the three to the j and the three to the four so we have three j minus 12 equals j plus two We'll then put these, we'll bring this one over and we'll bring the J to the other side. So we have minus J plus 12. So here we have 2J equals um, 2J equals 14. So J would have 7 apples, right? That's the... We now know how much Johnny has. We'll go back to the very beginning one where we had um, Thomas plus one equals um, Johnny minus one, right? So if Johnny gave Thomas an apple, they would have the same amount, right? And we'll add in then the, the, the answer we had before in the case that Johnny has seven apples. So seven minus one. And here we have plus one. We'll remove that, uh, that plus one to so remove another one. And here we would have then um, Tommy or Thomas um, has seven minus one minus one would be five. So here we have the answer. We have um, Johnny has seven and Tommy has five. There you go. Thomas has five and Johnny has seven. Perfect. Did I do it correctly? We'll find out. <laughs> and now to test my theory. <laughs> Yay, math! I can't believe how much it. I was having like to think about it. There you go. Nice. Johnny has seven apples and Thomas has five. As you can tell, if Johnny gave Thomas one apple, both uh, men would have six apples. Additionally, if uh, Thomas decides to give Johnny two apples of his, Johnny would have nine apples in total and three times as many as Thomas. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you for this. I like keeping my brain a little bit with a bit of math. I don't want to get like completely lose my my ability to do math. That would be not that good. <laughs> Here we have four horses. Yeah, let's go ahead and slow down as well then. Oh, that one's a bit more of a big one. You have four horses, all of which travel at different speeds. In traveling from point A to point B, these horses take 1, 2, 4, and 6 hours respectively. One day, you decide to move all of your horses from uh, point A to point B. However, you can only move a maximum of 2 horses at a time. And you need to ride a horse back to point A each time you return to move your other horse. Knowing you can only move as fast as the slowest horse you're traveling with, 
What's the fewest number of hours it would take to move all the all the horses? Like six plus four. Wait. Uh, I have an idea. We'll always take um, our fast horse. Because we need to do like dip, 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 dip like this. Go uh, to point A, to point B, to point A, to point B, to point A, to point B, right? So we'll always want to have our fastest horse with us. So we can go back as fast as we can, right? And uh, as such, that's going to be our point B to point A. Right? However, you can only move a maximum of two horses at a time. You need to ride a horse back to point A. Yeah. So the first one would be... It doesn't really matter which one you go first, but let's say we go with the the, the second fastest horse, right? So it would take us two hours the first time from point A to point B, then one hour from B to A, and then four hours from point A to B, then again one hour from B to A, then six hours from A to B, and that's it. So here we have 14 hours, I think. Because 4 plus 6 is 10. And then the other ones all together are 4. Okay, yeah, 14. That's what I imagine, right? Because we need to go to point A to B three times at least. Fourteen. Is that correct? Or am I wrong? Leave it to me! Wrong. Okay. Well, Where was my issue? I'm stumped. Am I stumped? I thought I was correct. Well, obviously I thought I was correct. That's why I put that uh, answer in. <clears throat> now, like, literally, what am I missing? When crossing back over from baby, you want to move as quickly as possible. Make sure you position you put yourself in a position to cross over to A on the one hour horse when possible. However, you always make traveling back on your one horse when you're separated, you may end up wasting time on other legs. Don't assume you always need to return to from A B to A on the one hour here? Yeah, and the last one you don't need to, but like, well... In order to move all your horses from A to B in the shortest amount of time, you need to cross over from A to B three times and return from B to A twice. How do you make the most effective use of this to limit the number of crossings? You have twice a one, and the other one once. Right? Because they need to cross at least once. The first one is with the one and the two. So you have uh, a <coughs> the first one is with the one hour and the two hour. We'll go back with the one hour one. And then the second one is on the two hour and the four hour one. Oh wait. A to B with these two takes us two hours. We'll go back with number one. So that's an hour. We'll go to point B with 6 and 4. That takes 6 hours. We'll go back with number 2. And then we'll go back to 1 and 2. That takes us 2 hours. So that's 3 times with number 2. 
Um, so that's 13 hours. Oh, you son of a gun. Uh, I had to get like the full on in. You kidding me? I thought that I got it. Too easy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's that's a good one to be honest. Oh, that's another part of the of our good old camera. Okay. Another puzzle. Let's go. Cube halves. Um, below are four shapes. Three of the shapes ho uh, form a whole cube when fitted together with an identical shape. However, one shape below is different in this regard and doesn't form a cube when joined with another identical shape. Circle the odd shape out from choices A to D below. Wait, A walks. Um, I think C also walks. D also walks. I think B is the one. No, B also walks. Huh? Because this one is not symmetrical. It doesn't work. C is the one that doesn't work. All the other ones are symmetrical, so you can like turn them enough times so that they like snap together. Consider this puzzle solved. Okay. The one with, without the um symmetric line is the one that doesn't work. C will not form a join. Uh, will not form a cube when joined with another identical Some area of the shape are just not uh, are just a little too complex to be. To, uh, to fit together neatly. Still, with just a few alterations, you could probably change that uh, shape into something that works, don't you think? Yeah. You just need to make the... Um, what is it called? If you put this over here... No. Hmm. How would, they, would one do, it, would do that? I think if it was like, like this, split in the middle, then it would work. Two paths, at least that one was easy. Uh, hat weather. Let's see, what do we got this time? There's a fellow with a particular rules about when he, when he wears his head. When it's sunny, he always wears his head. When it's rainy, he does not wear his head. When it's cloudy, he doesn't wear his hat, unless it's been cloudy for two days in a row. In which case, he wears his hat on the on the second of these days. What? Below is a schedule for when this fellow decided to wear his hat over the course of one week. Use the panel to fill in the sweater for each of the cases of the week. Can I move you? No, I cannot move you. Oh. I only have one cloud, though. That's weird. These two have to be rainy, right? But also... And it's cloudy, he doesn't wear his hat unless it's been cloudy for two days in a row. In which case, he wears his hat on the second day of the, these days. Like this. Because we don't know if, if 
that one was also cloudy. So let's say that this one was also cloudy and then it's cloudy again. And it's like, oh, this is the second day that it's cloudy. I'm going to wear my head. And then it becomes sunny. So they wear the head, of course. Um, then it's Wednesday again. Oh, it's cloudy again. So they're like, it's the first day that it's cloudy. I'm not going to wear my head. Then it's rainy. It does not wear his head. And it's sunny again. He wears his head. Rainy again. Doesn't wear his head. And sunny again. So he wears his head. I think that should be it, right? That's the one that makes the most sense to me. Yeah. I did it. Okay, good. <laughs> At least that one was again an easy one. Yeah. Excellent. If you seem that the money shown has was the second cloudy day in a row, then our friend must have worn his day ahead on that day. The rest of the solution then falls right into place. Thank you. Hat wearer. Oh, uh, hat wearer. Okay, there you go. And that was also the last puzzle that we have uh, completely missed. How about, how about you, uh, Granny? Why are the train is fixed? I do a jig or it's hard to get a lost puzzle when all, with this all, all this moving around. We won't come back this way again. So if you miss some puzzle, then uh, drop some. Take a pick in there. Yeah, I did. I missed like four of them, which was a lot. It's a lot more than I kind of want to miss out on. Finally, time to get back to down to business. It's been ages since I've got to do some real work. What do you mean? Didn't you just finish preparing the train? <laughs> sort of. But both of us can kick back. I gotta do... Oops. Uh, I mean, nothing. Things are good. Oh, he has... Hmm. He has something about him. Finally, time to get back to do some real work. We've talked with everyone now. So now I think it's time to go back. I'm pretty sure new people have appeared. Whoa! <laughs> Good day, sir. The name's Conrad. I'm a student from a village of Grobstone. I'm headed to Luxembourg, so it seems that we'll be traveling together for a while at last. Here, have you heard about that long tunnel on the way to Luxembourg? When the train passes through it, every light on board is switched off. Stranger still wants the train near the tunnel. Near the tunnel, all access to the Lux carriage is cut off. So what if someone needs to go to the toilet in the dark? Hmm, something very weird must be going on if they shut off access to the Lux carriage. Of course, it all makes perfect sense. Why didn't I see this before? Look, I think I've walked things out. Quickly, to the Lux carriage. I'm right behind you, uh, Professor. I almost said Captain. <laughs> okay, let's go to the Lux carriage and I'm... I do not know if... Do you... No, you do not even have a, a puzzle for me. Oh, all of a sudden I'm feeling kind of tired. It sure is boring around here. Mm. Go, 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 go. To the deluxe carriage. Still not the deluxe carriage. That's the deluxe carriage. Here we are. The deluxe carriage. Hmm. Something's written on the, that sign on the door. Actually, it appears to be a puzzle of sorts. I have a hunch that if we can solve that puzzle, we can gain access to the carriage. Oh. The door's code. Let's see. In order to pass through this door, Luke and Leighton must arrange the symbols according to the following rules. The star must be... Oh, it's one of these. Okay. It must be next to the moon. The X must be the second from the top. The circle must be somewhere above the diamond. And the moon must be located in two places below the diamond. Okay, so we know that the X is there. Um, we know that the moon or the diamond has to be in either this spot or this spot. Uh, that, that's the moon. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I was like, but we have two moons. What is going on? No, that, that is the moon. That is the circle. <laughs> The star must be next to the moon. Oh. The star must be next to the moon. So that means it can only be here and there. So it must be so somewhere above the diamond. Hmm. It must be located two spots below it. Like this then. The, uh, the circle 
is above the diamond. The X is on the second one. The star is next to the moon and the moon is two spots below the diamond. There you go. All of these are correct. This should do the trick. Hey, <laughs> I almost had them wrong, but huh, there you go. Wonderful. Easy peasy. You're in. Good gr job cracking that code. Yeah. There we are. The door is open now. You got a new hamster toy. Use this toy to help them get back into shape. Which means we can help it then. Goodness, look at this uh, place of the scale. Yeah, it's far more luxurious than the siren carriage. These tuckers must cost a pretty penny. Well, first things first, let's go help our little hamster buddy. What is this block? Um, isn't interested in these blocks, but they are useful for blocking his power in the line of sight. Position them accordingly for maximum effectiveness. So it's going to be completely useless currently. Right? Something that I can do, for example, is... Um, tree stump over here. Um, block over here. Flower over here. And then the pet house over here. Right? Because this now, like, makes them... Makes them move around a bit more. So we can place some more stuff over here. See? Now he just goes, get a little bit. He gets the stump, but he's like, ooh, apple! And he ignores the flower. Even though the flower is technically closer. And then he goes around and he's like, ooh, flower over there. And then he goes get the flower. And then he goes back to get the, uh, the house. But that's only again 12 so this one is good for helping us get the the bigger ones um oh you're tiny um yeah, correct it in this size hmm the only spot I can put that one in currently. I do wonder if this one is wrong, you know? It shouldn't be, because that's the spot for this thing, right? And this is the spot for that one. Wait a second. It was wrong. This is the spot. This is the correct spot for that one. So we're only missing like two small things. And also you may even be like this. Oh, I was correct in thinking it's like this. We'll see. For now, I'm going to put it like this then. Okay, okay, okay. Um, nothing here, but we've not been here before, so... Pin coins, ahoy! I have not touched these things before. They may have some uh, hint coins on the other ends. No, oh, Professor, this room is just breathtaking. And one and a half times as big as our room to boot. Plus, look at how super swishy the sofa is. Whee! Don't... Come on now, don't jump on the sofa. Look. Remember this discussion we had about how gentlemen should act in front of ladies? Oh, you're right. It's so squishy. Whee! Hmm. Hey, hey, hey what, you, what are you doing here? Radical surprise, dudes. Anyway, sorry to burst in on the party, but I'm just here to snazz up the rooms. Let's see. How so, uh, do I put them here? Hmm. Negatives, Tammy. That ain't good. Okay, then. Hmm. Hey, you there. Smart looking dude. I mean, you man. Hmm. Me good, sir? Uncle Baloo, uh, I mean, I mean the boss, uh, told me to jazz the place up with some flowers. Could you walk out where I should put these things to make this whole uh, place smell nice? Of course, it wouldn't be too much trouble to find a spot for flowers as lovely as these. And it's a puzzle time. Smell the roses, my friends. Ah, there's nothing like freshly cut roses to boost your spirits. Can you help Sammy freshen up the whole carriage with their fragrance? 
Touch a square with your stylus to place the rose. The fragrance of each rose reaches two squares in all directions, but can't penetrate walls. If the fragrance of two or more roses overlap, the resulting smell will be overpowering. So make sure to keep your roses spread it, uh, spaced out. Touch an existing rose to remove it. Okay. Ah, oh, no. Perfect. <laughs> and now to test my theory. I was just uh, placing them around. But there you go, we got the correct one. No puzzle unsolved. True. Well done. Five roses were enough to freshen up the carriage. Yay! Good job, me. There, how's that? Oh, but. Metallicious. It's not crazy, but it makes a statement. I'm sure we'll go down as a treat with a boss man. Hmm. Well, anywho. Uh, kick back, relax, and enjoy the rest of your ride on the Merlin Terry Express, as they say. It's, oh, it smells lovely in here now. Oh, yes, yeah, quite nice, I would say. But back to the task at hand. We've given this place a once over and come up empty handed. A gentleman can very well go barging into other people's rooms, but let's return to our own room. Ah, oh, Professor, do we have to? Feels like it's gotten so late, so can't we just stay here for, for now? Look, come on. We gotta go. Okay, okay. Um. Oh. And nothing here then. Okay. Oh, there was a coin. Nothing else you can do. The train just thinks. All of a sudden, I'm so tired. Oh, what's the matter, Flora? Oh, oh gosh, I was then tired too. All right, you two, this is no time for jokes. Oh dear, I'm suddenly quite tired myself. Oh no, we've been gassed up. Oh, we have been, oh gosh. Oh, we're nearing the tunnel. We didn't do it correctly. Game over. Eh? What's going on out there? Uh, am I dreaming? No. Oh. In the tunnel, secret tunnel, through the mountains, secret, secret, secret tunnel. Um, two trains pass in the darkness, off in the long tunnel. Move them around so that each locomotive ends up on the opposing tracks while keeping its carriage in the same order. The only carriages that don't need to end up in the obscene tracks are the number two carriage of both trains. Oh gosh, are you kidding me? Up, 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 up. Let me bring all of these uh, around. Come on. Oh no, I can't. I can't move that one in there. Oh wait, what I can do is swap out these two. Come on, come on, number two. And then. Let's... Put you around here, put you around there, put you around here, put you around there. Okay, these ones are now correct, right? I just need to get number two in the correct order. And we should be nice and dandy. Thankfully, there's no li limit to how many times you can like switch them around. Otherwise, it will be quite difficult. Piece of cake. Okay, don't speak about food, please. That's right, the two trains speed off into the darkness, each carrying the number two carriage of the other. Uh oh, wait, 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 what? Um, we're in number two. I just made that connection. 
We're in number two. We took the wrong train. I went. We got switched around with the wrong train. Hmm. My word. I must have fallen on the sofa. How careless of me. And how good the sofa is. Do you know what happened in that tunnel, Luke? I'm sorry, Professor, but I slept through the whole thing too. And I had the strangest of dreams. In my dream, part of the Molentary Express switched tracks while we were in the tunnel. Switched tracks? You mean to say one of the trains' carriage is now riding different rails? It might not have been a dream after all. If one of the carriages had split off from the train, it would no longer be bound uh, for Luxembourg. Maybe that carriage is how you get into the fa Phantom Town. Hmm, I'm beginning to, su to suspect that you're on right on the money, Luke. I hope the Phantom Town isn't as creepy as it sounds. Got a new hamster toy! Yippee! Everybody get ready to rock! The next stop is Frozen! Come on, passengers, let me hear you scream! Frozen, say it. Of course, how could I have missed this? Do you recall how this ticket was missing a destination? Well, it seems that the destination was staring us in the face all along. Really? But where, Professor? Oh, a ticket to where? That is a good question. In front of you is a ticket Layton and Luke found in uh, Dr. Schrader's flat. At first glance, the ticket appears to have no destination written on it. But when you look at it, it in just the right way, the ticket discloses its destination, the, fa the town of False Sands. The key to spotting the destination is the number that has been cut out from the ticket. Can you walk out which number must have been there? Use the ticket in the instruction um, booklet to puzzle this one out. You son of a gun. <laughs> I do not have the instruction booklet. Oh well, uh, let me go look that up. Um, oh, that's what they have. In the, the instruction booklet, you have uh, the exact same... Well, you have this image again. And then you need to do something with it. Okay, okay. I thought it, it had like something new in it, but... Uh, let me see. But I already saw like the... What is it called? I saw the solution. The solution is you fold it so that you only have... Well, you skip out this middle part, right? You'd fold it from this to this. And the destination will become then... Uh, the top of this one, so that's like this. The bottom of this one, so that's this. Top of this one, the bottom of this one, so that's this. The the bottom of that, the, uh, the top of this, the bottom of that, so it's like this. That's an S. That's a weird number. That's an N. It becomes an N as well. That's again an S. It becomes an E. Full sense, you see? But what is the one that we need to put here then? If you want to get... This. Well, it would have to be... A two. Yeah, cool, I like this Consider puzzle. This puzzle solved. It's a shame I uh, kind of spoiled myself on it though. And there we have it. It should have not said about the... Uh... Instruction <laughs> booklet. I thought it was gonna be like a uh, a lot more difficult, but it's kind of cool. <clears throat> a puzzle to wear. I get it. I suppose that means we've almost reached our destination. Yes. <gasps> wow, this is strange. When did it get so dark? What do you mean? I do believe we have arrived at the next stop. 
Could I don't see Flora, Professor. Where could she have been? Hey, you two. Glad to see you finally awake. Flora, where did you get off to? I'm sorry, but the carriage was really stuffy, and so when we stopped, I went outside for some air. You went out alone? Are you crazy? It's dangerous out there. Who knows what kind of oddballs could be lurking around? Oh well, I'll be more careful from now on. <laughs> What's your tone, Luke? A gentleman always remembers to treat a lady with uh, kindness and respect. Now, since we're all back together, why don't we get off this train and see where we are? Looks out for the murder, I see. Oh, we, we did this. Um, we finished up this mystery. Ah, oh, that is that is quite interesting. Um, so now we oh, wait. It stopped as well. Hmm. Oh yeah, we arrived at the uh, at our destination, didn't we? Why is it so creepy? This place gives me goosebumps. Same, Lou. Yes, I'd second that. Our third hand. I'm sticking close to you too. Oh. Why is why does it have so many paintings? Oh, these must be pictures of the town. Indeed, and old ones from the look of it. Judging by their condition, I'd say they're at least 30 years old. Right? You're an archaeologist. Of course you'd know. Now, Luke, don't tell me you actually forgot. Well, we'd best press on. <laughs> I was sort of imagining, like, the the professor just, like, points to... Look at it. There's a date. <laughs> or something like that. Hmm? <gasps> on earth hmm. professor what was that hmm. let's go oh. oh my oh we're in Halloween town holy moly What is going on here? I don't know, but it's strange. Oh, a new mystery. That's also the uh, the Goomba thingy, right? Mr. Baloney? Minutes after Professor Layton, Luke and Flora's arrival in Four Cents, the rundown train station transformed into a gleaming, ornately decorated building right before their eyes. What causes the sudden change to the station's appearance? That is a good question. I have no idea. Following the rumors of the Elysian box, the Professor, Luke, and Flora set foot in a strange town. But cautious as they were, nothing could have prepared them for the events to follow. Yeah, that is the end of the, uh, of the chapter. Nice. I finally won that sack short. <laughs> Thank you, game, for not only giving us super long ones. So there you go. We're going to go ahead and end the episode here. Next time, we're going to have Chapter 4, The Phantom Town of False Sense. So there you go. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the, uh, the, the episode. And... Uh, I hope you guys are looking forward to the next one, because I'm imagining it's gonna be a crazy one. Like, today's episode was like, or today's chapter, was extremely calm. Not gonna lie, we also apparently didn't miss any puzzles, I think. So that's also good. Um, or maybe we've not... Were there any puzzles? That... No, I don't even think there were any puzzles that we could have missed. So that's also interesting. Um, but anyway... Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, I hope to see you next time. Bye.